In today's video, I'm excited to have Preston Soto back in our studio, and we're going to be shining a pair of shoes using some really interesting colors. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. Hey Preston, hey, great to have you back I'm here in to Dallas. Be back, and, uh, Thanks for having you know, me. It was so much fun having you here in the uh, studio last time. I had a lot of fun. You know, there's Absolutely. not many people that I can sit down with at a table and really uh, yeah. share a shoe shining with. Right. And so I had so much fun yeah. that I said, you know, we need to do this again. I'm glad to be back. This was a lot of fun last time, and I'm glad to shine some shoes with you. Yeah, and, you know, it was a really exciting to kind of see yeah. just how many of our viewers really watch both channels. And a lot of them, of course, already knew your work on the Elegant Oxford. But today I thought we'd mix things up a little bit. I mean, last time we did a pretty traditional shine. Right. And, uh, you know, I know, uh, Preston, you do such a phenomenal job with your patinas and really kind of adding dimension to a pair of shoes that I thought it'd be fun to have a brown pair of shoes and then give you some interesting colored polishes to see how you kind of play around with these. Right. Uh, these are a, a pair of our TLBs uh, from our GMTO, the Group Made Daughter Program, so you can do whatever you want with these. Great. We're not going to break anyone's heart. Okay. Uh, and then I've got a black pair, which everyone knows black is kind of my favorite color. Mm. And so I thought I would use a navy cream polish and some mahogany just to show how even with the black pair of shoes, you can still add a little bit of dimensionality in yeah. there, but in a much more subtle That's way. That's going to look great. Yeah, so anyway, let's kind of see how this goes. Yeah, I'm excited. And so this is a this is a pretty standard kind of run-of-the-mill brown shoe. Right. Um, which is which will provide a nice canvas. Right. But um, for you, it really is a canvas, so yeah, how I are like you going to use your colors? I like adding red tones, so you can use some mahogany okay. just to kind of give it a little bit more depth than just boring brown. I know yeah. bo brown isn't boring, but some people think, oh, it's kind of boring. Yeah. But this is definitely a very just neutral brown. Yeah, it's just There's a plain no brown. There's no red in that. Right, and you can add some different uh, colors and shades and make it more interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, so you're going to focus on mahogany? Yeah, and then I'm also going to use these different types of browns here. We okay. have... Uh, medium brown and we have, uh, here we go, dark brown, yeah. and these two will, will mix well. Good so one. how will you use those browns here? I mean, we'll see you do it, but kind of talk through a little bit of um, your thinking. I'm going to use uh, the mahogany over a lot of the shoe and then maybe some darker accents by the toes. Okay. And then, um, For the antiquing. Yeah, kind of the antiquing look. So. Okay, great. Well, I think I'm going to follow your lead. Uh, I'll use the navy over the entire shoe. Uh, and then whenever we get to kind of producing some shine and some mirror, I'm going to really see how this mahogany begins to play with That's this. That's exciting. I'm excited to see that one. So first things first, these are new shoes. And, uh, you know, I always like to say that uh, especially new shoes need to be polished. Yes, absolutely. So um, I'm going to start with some Rune of the Tour. That's and I great. know you like the Rune of the Tour also. So let's... I'm going to remove some laces here if I can oh, here. Right. Laces. It's really making me yeah. uh, raise my game here. Yeah, it's the lace game. You know, I mean, I have to say, I really... Um, I hate removing my laces. I don't like it either. You just got to be really gentle and make sure not to put too much strain on those eyelets. But other than that... Well, and I feel like it's unrealistic. I mean, if you're doing a, uh, a big shine, sure. you know, remove the laces. The first shine, I remove laces. You know? Next time, no, I won't. But otherwise, it produces a lot of strain with it lacing does. shoes on the yes. eyelets. Putting them back in especially is a real killer sometimes. Yeah. You got to really... Especially if the tongue is like sewn to yep. the side of the shoe. And those are really a pain in the behind. Here we go. I love these flat laces. Yeah, flat laces. They're really uh, underrated. These they are really some of our, nice. I think our, our Wellington flat shoelaces. Yeah, those are great. Yeah, so these are from our GMTOs, which we've just kind of kicked off. Our first two have been with TLB, but the idea is to really filter in or filter through some less represented shoemakers mm. or do some really interesting uh, models that you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily ever find in a retail store. Right. But we thought we'd kind of kick it off with the classics, which, you know, a yes. black cap to Oxford, a brown cap to Oxford. You really, yeah, two really important you know, shoes for You've got to have those. And these, I mean, TLBs based on the island of Mallorca, uh, yeah. similar to Carmina. Mm. And for whatever reason, they just seem to really get some nice shoes out for a good value. Sure. Yeah, brown is uh, one of my favorite colors also. It's just... Uh, yeah, that's funny. I found myself wearing a lot of brown and yeah. whenever I was younger. And then, you know, once I started traveling more and I guess kind of fell into my own aesthetic, you know, you kind of like settle on like what your palette is. Yeah. And for me, it just was always kind of darker, a little bit more yeah, monochromatic funny. I had the colors. the exact opposite thing opposite, yeah. I used to wear black all the time. My first pair of Goodyear welted shoes were black wingtips by Johnson & Murphy. Some old eBay find. They were vintage. Love eBay. And 
as I grew up, I started using brown. My brother is a big proponent of brown. He's really? Always, I don't even think he owns a black pair of shoes. He just I loves. I a lot of people like that. And he, he loves loafers. And he's uh. like, he always told me, Preston, I just, I think brown is just fantastic. I always like brown. <laughs> So do you always apply your polish just with your fingers? Uh, uh, most of the time, ex unless I've dyed the shoe with okay. leather dye, then I then don't want that on my fingers. That's so funny. Yeah. Um, really, I, I prefer my chamois. Uh, but I do, I do notice when you use your fingers, um, it, I get a, and I, it just goes into the leather, I think, a little bit better because you're, you're, you're the one controlling the pressure. You know, for me, I think pressure yeah, makes a pressure. big difference. Yeah, the pressure is really a, a huge thing. So... Okay, so. All right, a little bit of conditioning. Time for the, uh, it's a little bit of mahogany. So what you're effectively doing here is the base, kind of the base, right? Yeah, so, just the you base. So you're, you're applying the mahogany to the entire shoe. Right, and people are, I think they expect too much when I say that. It's not gonna change the yeah. shoe's color. Mm -hmm. um, it's just gonna add something in tint. person. I yeah. say tints, you know. A, a kiss, I tell people, yeah. just a little bit here. You're not going to change the color of a pair of shoes just with with cream, uh, with cream polish. Yeah. Certainly not with wax. Right. I mean, cream polish has more pigment in it than wax polish. But it's not. But enough. it's still pretty transparent. Right. And a wax polish is like almost completely transparent. Even when you use real leather dye, sometimes it's not as easy as you'd think to completely. Having to do multiple coats. Yeah, or you have to strip the old color oh, off completely. Yeah. I had a pair that was uh, dark brown. What and, color were you taking it? Okay, let's see here. They were actually burgundy. The guy wanted dark brown. I stripped the shoe completely down. The second I applied the dye, um, it, it didn't matter. It, they turned burgundy again. Really? I could not get the burgundy out. Huh. As soon as they got any moisture on them, they looked red. Really? Yeah, it was the weirdest thing. So what you end up doing? <laughs> I, I, I contacted the owner. I was like, hey, listen, these shoes are just not going to be brown. He was like, that's fine. I, I, burgundy's cool for me, too. And I was like, okay. Good. So that was a good outcome. We've got one color here, one choice. I told him it's not working. Every time I even recorded and sent it to him, I was like, "Hey, uh, this isn't working. It keeps um, going back to burn." You know, it's interesting how I mean, you work with a lot of different leathers. I yeah. mean, you really get leathers that just don't react oh, how time. you would expect them to. I get cheap leathers that don't work out. Um, the dye won't stick. Won't stick. Even polish won't stick. Nothing will get on there. Like, it'll be a tan shoe, and I'll go over it with dark brown, and it won't dye. Like the, the dye just won't go in. It's like the leather is being really resistant. So I have to use an opaque leather paint almost for those tiny areas. Yeah. Mostly for the patinas on the toes. That's where I really need it. Especially down here. Mm -hmm. You really got to get in there with uh, an opaque uh, leather paint. Have you um, ever had like the polish actually pull the finish off of a pair of shoes or create spotting that you couldn't remove? Um, yeah, it happens a lot on tan pairs. I tell people to be really careful with tan pairs. But the darker the pair, I think the easier, easier. it is to hide stuff. Um, yeah. I mean, we've had customers that use the Saphir Renovator and it, like, it takes off some of their finish. I'm like, yeah. you know, it's impossible for a water-based product to do that. It's the leather. It's the leather. Yeah. And I always tell people, like, be realistic. I don't expect anything to go wrong with your order, but if these are shoes. Something could go wrong. And I've never had anything go wrong. I'm just, I tell people. You've never had to burn a pair? No. No, I've never had to burn a pair. Not yet, anyway. I'm still thinking, like, what am I going to do the day a pair goes catastrophic on me? And I'm going to tell the owner, well, sorry. You get a free shoe shine voucher for next time. <laughs> That's about all I can offer. We had to burn these, uh, yeah. but uh, I'll shine your next pair for free. Actually, I had a, a customer send me a, an old vintage pair of Hanovers, and I didn't damage them, but they they were damaged. They, something had happened to them, and they weren't. I couldn't shine them. But my dad, I don't know how he did this. A week before, he had found the exact same pair, and I called the guy. I said, "I'll just give them to you." Really? Identical pair. I don't know how it happened. They were tan. That's um, in the same size. Same si same size. They had a V cleat on them and everything. And I was That's like, oh, I'll give them to you. I thought, I just, they were. Uh, That's why we don't do like women's purses because yeah. I'm afraid for the day that someone's like, ah, oh, you know, my $30,000 Chanel yep. bag I ruined because, you know, you told yeah. me that it wasn't going to do this. Right. I always tell people, be really careful. Okay, first, first buff. Okay, cream's good. Now we're ready to brush. There we go. Looking good. 
Yeah. Well, your shoes will definitely be more noticeable, but right. I can like barely see, probably not even perceptible in the camera. I'm happy here. This is looking good. So what's been your most uh, challenging pair of shoes? Most challenging pair. The most challenging pair of shoes in general are tan shoes where the leather uh, darkens when you add moisture and there's mm. no way to stop it. And it looks really terrible. It doesn't look lovely or it's not a patina. It doesn't look like a beautiful patina. It looks like nasty blotches. Really? I don't know what causes it and I've tried everything and I cannot remove them. It seems to be old, faulty leather. And I, yeah, where I, it's like it's almost like adding water to um, they to look paper. Like, they look like water stains. Yeah. And no matter what I do, like the shoe will dry and it'll look fine. Second, you add cream or anything, it just turns like dark brown. But then once it dries, will it? it looks like, okay. Yeah. But sometimes you see like a little gray line. Mm. Um, so people have offered me solutions. None of them have worked so far. Really? So. When I see those shoes, I get upset. I'm like, uh oh, it's another one of these pairs. How do you, how can you, you just develop an eye for it? Like um, identifying the leather or is it kind of all tan? When they show me a picture, I'll look at the tan and you can see like some gray lines underneath. I know it's going to. Uh, and so will you just say, I, I don't even want to touch them? Yeah, I'll, I'll take them, but I'll tell them, hey, we have to check and be real with your expectations. Corrected yeah. grain shoes are, are a tough project because people. It doesn't take polish. They tell me, hey, I'm going to send you my shoes and they get here and they're corrected grain. And I have to message them and be like, hey, there's not much I can do. So I don't want you to expect the shoes to be transformed, and I really can't do much with yeah. them except. I mean, the only thing that really works with the corrected grain leather is an act. It's almost like oil paint. Like it literally yeah. just sits on top of the. Right. I mean, this leather's been sanded down past the pores. So yeah. People tell me, can you remove the acrylic finish? I'm like, I can, but the leather underneath is no good. Yeah. It doesn't absorb anything really either, which is tough. But, uh, I've never done that. That would be an interesting kind of experiment. And it doesn't look to... good. It doesn't look good at all. The, the leather's like pink. Yeah. If the, the shoe's burgundy and you take Well, what the... they actually do is they split, they'll split the leather. Right. And they'll take one piece of leather and then split it into like five skins. Yeah. They still can call it leather because technically it's it, leather. It came, but... Yeah, it's leather, but it's not good. And I, I, I've seen a lot of uh, corrected grain from like 90s pairs in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then some companies today still do it, but not a lot. It's not as. Popular. What about like the acrylic finish? Like, I mean, even Alden from the factory applies an acrylic finish. Yeah. Um, some people remove it, some people don't. Um, I remove Allen Edmonds factory finish a lot. Really? Because I'm really experienced with Allen mm -hmm. Edmonds because that's all I work on. And does it take special care just to remove that acrylic without affecting the base finish, or are you it, always going to disturb that a little bit? If you remove it, you can. It'll remove some color, but shoe cream is enough to, enough make it to really, get it back. And on. It looks better. It shines better. It yeah. looks a lot better. So I tell people get rid of the factory finish um, on Allen Edmonds. Because they spray it, right? They have a, a spray on factory finish yeah. of some kind that covers. But it's kind of acrylic. It's like what you're kind saying. Kind of, yeah. I yeah. mean, it gives it a, a, almost a permanent shine in some ways. And the uniformity. Not, and the uniformity, the yeah. Yeah. In some ways, it kind of masks, you know, the leather. But you know, really, I mean, Allen Edmonds. Um, they use a pretty good quality leather. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's not you bad. know, it's full pour, or full grain, open yeah. pour leather. I, I just have the most experience with it. People always ask me, why don't I shine other pairs? It's because that's what people I don't people receive any, yeah. I don't receive any. I, I do get some Crockett and Jones here and there, but. Well, we received, I mean, we had an extensive shoe review series on Allen Edmonds. They were yeah. gracious enough to send us a bunch of shoes from their collection. Uh, and we were compelled to do it because, like what you said, I mean, the, if we were to poll our customers, there's no question yeah. that Allen Edmonds is the most predominant or popular style of shoe. And, yeah. you know, I mean, yes, you can get a nicer shoe for more money. Right. Um, and you can even find a nicer shoe for the same amount of money, but you can't dispute the, uh, the fact that Allen Edmonds just has a, a ubiquity and kind of an availability right. that you only, only can find with Allen Edmonds. Absolutely. Do you have some water for the mirror shot? Oh, yeah, I do actually. Uh, my trusty high shot. There we go. Water dispenser. I love this thing. So how many coats of cream polish will you apply before you move cream on? Cream polish, one or two. Really? On this one, I just did one. one. Let's see here. I noticed also you have to be careful with cream polish that you use to antique the front because it might get pulled off when you start mirror shining. Okay. The abrasive nature of the, the oh. chamois going over. You can pull it Sometimes off. can pull it off and it doesn't look super uniform. Um, and instead, you you prefer to do the antiquing with wax polishes? Uh, yes. Uh, the best method I found is to use dye, but mm. sometimes adding a little bit of darker wax works yeah. 
works well as well. Well, that is one of the challenges with any shoe polish is that it, it'll come off. Yeah, yeah right? that's true. There we go. I mean, over several shines over a long-term time, like those pigments will settle into the actual pores of the leather. Right. But, you know, nothing you do once is going to be permanent. Right. That's true. Here comes the famous mirror shine. Some pairs shine really quickly. I actually did one with full cut without stopping, and it didn't take super long, but really? some pairs yeah. can take uh, a bit of time. There we go, a little drop. Just keep going. What are you starting with the... Um, I'm starting the, with the, the Pat, Deluxe. Pat Deluxe. And, you know, we were talking about this last time. You prefer to use the Pat Deluxe and finish with the mirror gloss, where I'm the exact Right, opposite. I love Pat Deluxe. For me, it just shines really quickly, really easily. I've had good luck with it. That's just my experience with with it. I don't know why. Yeah, well, it's a great polish, but I just find with the mirror shine, you need to build that foundation of hard waxes in order to really get it to gloss. Yeah. And you just do that faster with the mirror gloss. <sighs> this breath technique also helps. My hand's getting tired. <laughs> it's the angle. Usually I have, I shine. What's the most there. number of shoes have you shined in a? Oh gosh, I think one or two. It, it takes. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things I can't rush. Uh, but if I really had to, and I started early, you could do three or four, I guess. Do you ever work on multiple pairs, just kind of in parallel? Yes, uh, I found you, that it, it does take time. Yeah. yeah. So while one pair is resting, I'm on to the other. Yeah. If I really want to save time, but if I'm just relaxing, watching a movie, I'll just get one pair out and start doing that. All right, I'm ready to like get done with the cream and on the more exciting. Oh, the mirror shine. I build up. I feel like I'm doing a workout building this mirror shine up. So you normally polish, you said, uh, you're normally on the ground, aren't you? Like, because your I table's I film on, on my knees mm -hmm. at the table, but when I shine, I sit down and I have a little fold-out table. Okay. And I don't film that usually. Good. It's um, probably more comfortable to have it at a higher yeah, level, Yeah, and it's right? higher, so I can actually, this is like, I can't, yeah, I can't mm -hmm. do this. This feels really hard. Do you mind if I sh use that shoe box? Yeah, to sure. add some height? He's just making sure my shoes are. Yeah, this you is like. You like to bring it like almost to eye level? Yeah, I just feel like when it's too far down, I can't get in. This is perfect. I feel like now I'm working at my table. This is a lot of basic. Yeah, I mean, how many pairs of, sh of shoes do you think you shine a week now that you're really doing the video production also? Oh. Uh, the video, producing videos has cut down on my shines. Yeah. But. Um, I try to get a, a pair done a day, but really? sometimes... And you're able to do a pair a day while also filming and producing I try, videos? and I end up shining shoes at night. Since I use natural lighting for my videos, at night I can't film videos, so I get to shining shoes. Just for the kind of the shine business? Yeah, and my wife's sleeping at that point, the baby's yeah. asleep. And Just passing time. the time. Yeah. yeah, I have time to... Hey, you know what? If you're going to watch some television, you might as well be productive. Yeah, and it relaxes me and... Um, but if something really good is on, I'll like... You gotta put the shoes down. I gotta put the shoes down. <laughs> um, what do you charge for a shoe shine? What is it, what's your range? I know it varies. Yeah, right? so... An, uh, you don't really have a price list. A mirror shine, like a normal rest restoration full cream, all sphere products, and a mirror shine is like $50. Mm -hmm. You know, give or take. That's pretty reasonable. And then a patina and a mirror shine is about 120 and then if they need a repair, like, oh, I scuffed my toe and need that repaired, I'll, I'll add a little bit of extra charge. And you're there. using uh, just the renovating repair cream for that? Yeah, I'm using the red, yeah, and then I sand the, the cut down. And I found, obviously, black pairs are the easiest to work on. Tan pairs can be kind of difficult. I tell people, yeah, I might have to darken the toe a little bit mm -hmm. because uh, yeah. matching the color is kind of a, of a challenge. Yeah, it's very challenging. Yeah, but um, for the most part, a lot of people like patinas. It's like the thing they want. They really like. And you're using leather dyes with that. I am using permanent leather dyes. Um, and I started using Saphir, and they have great dyes. I thought I had really good success. You applying with, with the paintbrush or? The little cotton dauber. Okay. The little, I used to use paintbrushes a lot, but I found the cotton lollipop dauber is mm -hmm. really, really good at applying cream. That's interesting. But I still use the, the paintbrush for, uh, the by the well. The ones. By the well, because that little oh, dauber well, yeah. can't get into the. Fascinating. Yeah. And then sometimes I get orders in San Diego from people in town. And those are fun because I get to meet people. And, and so you'll drive out and connect with them? Yeah. Or we'll meet somewhere or 
whatever, and that's always a fun time. We'll go to the park and shine shoes, and we'll talk. Yeah, and then one time I shined pair, a pair at the mall. Uh, Did you have it, a crowd? Some people were asking, what is that? They were looking over because there was a camera set up. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, it was presented really It's nice. like almost performance art. Yeah, and I, I told my wife, I want to go to Seaport Village, which is like a little village by the seaside in San Diego and shine shoes because there's performers there all the time. Yeah. And Do you need shoes. a permit for that? I don't in think California, so. California, you never Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't, haven't asked, but maybe. And if I get a call, you know, late at night to come bail you out. Yeah. Uh, Elegant Oxford's been canceled. <laughs> I'm in jail. Here we go. When it feels too dry, you need to add more wax. I'm trying to teach my wife to shine shoes. <laughs> I want to do a video where she attempts to shine a pair of shoes. I want to do that. Also, I think that would be fun. You need to get her a pair of Carmina women's shoes for Christmas. I really, I'm looking into getting her a pair at some point because she really likes. Yeah. But, but her, she's really tiny. Yeah, but that's the beauty of Carminas. They do yeah. all the sizes and widths. Yeah, that's true. I mean, for women's shoes, you can't find anything of that quality. Right. And their women's shoes are actually uh, Goodyear welted. Some of them are shell corded, and it's amazing. Yes. As you said, I mean, how much more would you charge for like a size 12 or 13 pair of you, shoes? People don't realize that a size 7 and a size 13 are like, it's literally totally double the yeah, size. Double. I mean, it's double really amazing that a lot of the um, shoe brands, none of them, I don't know of a single shoe brand that upcharges <sighs> for large shoes. Yeah, that's right. But it's I mean, it's really a great deal because the amount of, of work that goes into it, the amount of material yeah, is more. That's true. This is that middle stage where it's just yeah. like, it looks worse. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't get discouraged if it looks terrible at first. Stick with it. It will come. Yeah. It's like when, well, when I had hair. Like, <laughs> when you get your hair cut, the first day it doesn't look that great. And then it grows in a tiny bit and it starts to look really good for the next couple of weeks and you have to cut it again. And this is black, right? Yeah, it's so black. I'm adding black mirror gloss. It doesn't have a lot of... Uh, yeah. Especially the mirror gloss, even less pigment. It has barely any, so it's not. It's just really for the shine. But you can always add It's nice black. for tinting. I mean, I don't want to discourage people from buying the pigmented colors because, you know, it does provide kind of a nice tinting aspect. Yeah. But if anything, I think that's one of the reasons to play around with different colors, like black on a dark brown yeah. pair of shoes. Yeah. Especially with the mirror gloss, you're not going to, not going to ruin the shoes just by putting some mirror gloss on yeah. them. Yeah. And, and uh, on a tan pair, you'll notice black, obviously, but on a brown pair, you won't, won't even see it, and it'll just look really nice. Yeah, this is the point of, uh, you know, Where the, middle, the middle. Yeah, the middle. Shine's coming out really nice. I don't know what mine's not. Well, I feel like this is, I'm getting into the mirage of the mirror shine because I'm like not fully satisfied with it at the moment. This is where, like this is the point that if we weren't filming a video, I'd leave and come back to it tomorrow. Yeah, same here. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like that final 10%. I feel like you can only get that the next, the day. next day. Yeah. I've I totally agree with you. It's like one of my favorite ways to shine shoes is like on a conference call or something. Yeah. Because, you know, like it's like watching television. I mean, you're not really, you're sitting there listening, you know. You've got a lot of time. Yeah. Or I'll leave doubt. a pair of shoes at the office and just shine them over the course of a few days. Yeah, I like need to get some more wax on here. I'm like not satisfied right now. This is where it starts to get obsessive. I'm like, uh, I'm not satisfied. Sometimes you gotta hit it from different angles too. You can't, uh, you gotta get the shine going so it connects with the other parts and then glossage is over. Yeah. This pair is actually turning out to be a little more difficult for me. Well, and they're new. That doesn't make it any easier, right? Right. Yeah, this is one of the pairs that is taking a little bit of time. You know, it's amazing sometimes how difficult some shoes can be. These seem yeah. to be. Yeah, this pair is not being super easy on me. I call it the, the mirror shine mirage. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes you really just need to put a day uh, in between, you know, 
this point in the final shine just for your sanity. I have to do that all the time. <laughs> I can never get a perfect shine in one sitting. I have to come back to it and everything sets over at yeah. night and the next morning it looks even better. Well, and you know, if you just think about it, like, I mean, it the, does help the waxes cure <gasps> in some ways. Yeah. All right, so the final buff is always for me uh, with a lot of pressure. Yeah. I mean, it's, as I, I call it, it's kind of like wet sanding. You just have to take that final few layers off. Just heat, pressure. Yeah, I wish we had more time. I wish I could come back to these tomorrow. Yep. Make them well, look we even can better. save them for the next, yeah, for the next, next time. trip. Yeah. Yes, yeah, shining it. I mean, doing a new pair of shoes straight to mirror finishes. Uh, yeah, it's a challenge. Ambitious. Okay. So the pair here. And breaking out a sweat. You know, we turn off the AC whenever we do this for the audio. Yeah, and it gets hot. See these. Here's a great. Well, in the yeah. interest of the video, I'm gonna just stop it there because I could go forever. This yeah. is a mirror shine. There we, well, go. there we go. So look at that. Great shine. Certainly better than whenever we set off. Sure. So, Preston, always Thanks for fun. Having me. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. And um, anyway, we look forward to many good shines together. Absolutely.